Congratulations on completing the task and on writing the first program that generates samples of a random variable by simulating a continuous time Markov chain. In this X next exercise, you are going to do something similar, but we are going to make the chain slightly more complex. Instead of simulating a chain whose transition graph is shown here, the chain you simulated with the last exercise, we are going to simulate a chain that has the slightly more complicated transition graph shown here. To be clear, in this chain, states 0 and 1 are both still transient, and state 2 is still absorbing. The difference, however, is that now the system can undergo a transition that takes it from state 0 to state 2 directly. In other words, the system can go from state 0 to state 2 without having to first pass through state 1. The task that you are about to do still involves generating random variables that measure the total time the system will take to transition from state 0 to state 2. So we will now take a moment to think about how we can write a piece of software to perform this task. The first step in this procedure will involve generating a random variable x1 from an exponential distribution with parameter lambda1. This random variable will tell us the time it will take the system to transition from state 0 to state 1. We then generate a random variable x2 from an exponential distribution with parameter lambda2 in order to work out how long it will take us how long we will have to wait for a transition from state 0 to state 2. The next step of the process is the new one in this exercise. We will have to make a decision on whether to transition from state 0 to state 1 or from state 0 to state 2. We make this decision based on the values of the two random variables we have just generated, x1 and x2. In particular, if x2 is less than x1, we transition to state 2 because the transition to state 2 would happen before we had the time to wait for the transition to state 1. If x2 is less than x1, the procedure is finished as we have arrived in our final destination state, namely state 2. We then set the random variable y that measures the total time it takes to get to state 2 equal to x2. If, however, x2 is greater than x1, then the train has transitioned to state 1. We thus have to generate a third random variable x3 that measures the that again comes from an exponential distribution with parameter lambda 3. This random variable will make the time that it takes to transition from state 1 to state 2. The value of y, the total time to transition from state 0 to state 2, in this case is thus x1 plus x3. Hopefully the algorithm that I've just explained is reasonably clear. To test you have understood, try the next task in the exercise which asks you to sample random variables by simulating the chain shown on this slide using the method that I've just described. As in the previous exercise, you are asked to calculate multiple samples of the random variable of interest as well as a confidence limit. Notice, however, that I have not given you to put a, um, a block to sort a list, so you will not be able to extract percentiles. Instead, you are going to have to revise what you learned about extracting confidence limits using the central limit theorem in the block to the exercise that you did in week 4 or 5. Good luck.